Yo, what's going on guys? Now I know it's been a while you heard that opening. Um, actually, I did do this video prior on my Twitch stream live, but I wasn't really happy with the quality of it. It was a little bit too blooper heavy, so I wanted to redo it again. Something a little bit more constructive and um, cohesive to watch. So today I'll be talking about my opinions on this Price Ticket 2020. Yes, I do know this video is very late. I was waiting towards the end. I didn't want to release any video. I've done this before. Whenever I don't think people should surprise take it, I just don't post a video. Um, so the surprise ticket came out like, I believe two weeks earlier. So I didn't want to post a video because I believe everyone should have waited till the end because we do have the free 10 posts going on currently. Now, this surprise ticket is very special because if you're a budget player, there is something that is very appealing that comes around Christmas. It's not, I think it's a one thing, a one day only thing. Um, I'll talk about it in a minute, but just want to throw it out there. Uh, it may be worth for some people to skip this surprise ticket and pull on the scam gotcha that may be coming up. Keep in mind, it's a May. It happened last year. We can assume that it's possible that it can happen again, if not something greater. So if you're a budget player, this is something you should be looking out for. Also, if you're watching this video, at the time of Lily's released in like, uh, I think six, seven hours at the time of posting this video, you can uh, find me on my Twitch channel. I will be pulling for her live. I'm not gonna really wait for my free pulls. I'm just gonna pull, fuck it, YOLO, I don't care. I want Lily, right? Hey. Now, back to what I was talking about earlier. So I did mention that there was a scam gotcha that may be more appealing to players so it happened, I believe, last year, Christmas time. I've actually looked it up. So this is recording number two, because I went to look it up to find out what date it was. It's right here. Holiday Star Premium um, premium Draw Set on sale. I believe this lasts only one day. So keep in mind, you have one day to do this. Um, you, can, you have to be very diligent when doing this. So it gave you the option of acquiring either any primal or any prime mark. Now, this is randomized, right? This is random. You're not guaranteed to get what you want, but you at least here guaranteed something good. If worst case scenario, it's a duplicate of what you already have. You don't want that though, unless you can use the sunstone. So you do have some really good options here. It's every primal and every prime arc. Personally, I don't believe I pulled on this, if I remember correctly, but I could be wrong. But this is something that could be even better. Maybe they have Bell in here too. I don't know. Um, who knows, right? But this might be something people who are contemplating buying the surprise they get, but their best option is like, I don't know, Narmea or something. Like one of, like a, a new unit that's rebalanced or something. It may be better to get this instead if you don't have any of them. If you're very, like, if you're one of the people who are very unlucky and didn't get any primals, or if you don't have any Primarchs, this can be the uh, the bang for your buck that you're looking for. Now, now that we're done with that, um, I would like to also mention I am doing two giveaways for the surprise ticket. One uh, giveaway will be exclusive to my Twitch stream. So you have to be on my Twitch channel to have access to that giveaway. Or you can, in this video, comment on the in the description I um, mean, under the video, in the comments. Yeah, you know, the YouTube harbor larking and all that. Anyway, just leave a comment on this video and I will on Friday, December 18th, right? The Friday, December 18th at 9 a.m. Why is it so early? 9 a.m. EST. I have to go to work. So <laughs> it's really early because I have to go to work. So 9 a.m. EST, I will pick a winner um, please be there if you get lucky because I already leave like a yeah I don't know if you're a YouTube winner you, I hope you're there I'll message you on YouTube if you win so keep that in mind um, when leaving a comment just leave what you used your money for did you buy the scam gotcha are you buying the scam gotcha are you gonna buy the um, surprise ticket good enough for me and uh, hopefully may the best person win and please pick up quickly because you don't have much days <laughs> before the surprise ticket goes away. It does go away on the 20th 
I know it's late. I've procrastinated pretty hard and I've been busy with work. So giving out two surprise tickets, one would be via my Twitch um, and one would be via YouTube. If you want to enter the Twitch giveaway, um, it's going to be something that's live. So if you're there, you can enter. If you're not there, you can't. Now, I think that covers about everything with the video and we can now get started with the content, which is the actual surprise ticket. Now, we're going to talk about the new units first. It's what I want to start doing. So there's four new units in this surprise ticket. We have Florence, Deantha, Juliet, and Gawain. Before I start the video, let me tell you right now, I don't have any of the four units. I don't got them. So what's coming out of my mouth is all opinion based on what I've watched and what I read with their skills. I don't have them. So my testing is nothing, meaning that people who have the unit, more validation over me. I don't got the units. So yeah, that is how I feel about the game. I've always had this approach. People who have the units have more experience than people who do not have the units value their opinion more. Now, let's talk about the units. So the first unit we'll be looking at is Florence. Now, Florence is a, she's a unit that's, uh, I don't know what to describe her as, um, skill damage heavy unit, I guess. <laughs> Because currently her main her major use, if you have not been watching all the Hercules videos, uh, her, Shutera, and Lesia do a lot of damage. <laughs> they do a lot. <laughs> they do they do they do uh they do quite a bit of damage. <laughs> so yeah. Um I don't think that was intended, but uh Somehow, uh, they do a lot of damage, so. Hey, if you're looking for, wow, bro, I wanna do a lot of damage too, and I have a hundred gold moons on the side. Maybe I wanna get a win Hercules. Honestly, even I, this, you know, to be honest, I thought about getting one. I'm still not sh certain on it. I think I'm getting the Dark Harp next. Um, but the win Hercules is like, I like the Dark Hercules and it's kind of fun. So, getting another Hercules sounds even more fun. Just a thought. Um, other than that, she's, you, I would say she's a good alternative if you don't have of the three core full auto units being Grimnir, Monkey, Tiamat. She can sub any of those three units if you don't have them. Um, mainly Monkey is probably the best option because he does have a dispel and debuffs on her. But, I mean, monkey, if you don't have monkey, yikes. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. Uh, she's a good unit, but most of the stuff I've seen with her is skill damage based. Her actual in-game fighting capability, she's like mediocre at best because the main three being Grimnir, Monkey, and Tiamat are so core for full auto and stuff. So it's hard to really replace them but she can be an alternative if you don't have any of the three so that's how i feel about her right now um have any more questions ask them in comments i'll try to elaborate more but that's really the best i can tell you about the unit i mean you can read her skills like what else is going to be used for you're not going to burst her you're not going to burst them down with like a ton of bonus damage so yeah let's get on to the next unit now we're on to my potential surprise ticket option, Juliet. Reason being, I'm a Kalulu-less pleb, and my Caliostro needs crest. <laughs> I am desperate to get any character that can give me a crest to Caliostro. Little tip, if anyone here had been using Summer Caliostro, you probably know her biggest flaw when it comes to full auto. Her skill three consumes that crap. So. You know what happens is you end up getting to let's say four crest and her skill one comes up unfortunately if you don't have five you don't get the full effect therefore what happens is that Kaliosha goes up to five then a turn or two later she uses scale three which consumes one crest activates it again and repeats the process to you down two crest so it's, it's a big hamper on her burst ability on full auto 
if you do not have a lot of units supporting her with crest what makes with what makes Kululu so good on full auto is he's a crest giving maniac so um the only other alternative in water right now that can activate crest for all allies on full auto is juliet via her skill one keep in mind though the cooldown on her skill one is pretty hefty at a whopping eight turns so that's kind of yikes but you, this is your only real option if you want to have a good, consistent Kaliostro skill 1 build on Fall Auto. Keep in mind that this character is not a staff unit. Um, don't know how, but she's not a staff. So, you're, if you're running the Ultima staff grid or something along those lines, like the Ultima staff, she will not be benefiting from it on water. But she is your best option if you're looking for that final slot unit to go between Lily and Kaliostra. Keep in mind though, she's also human, so your Lily is going to be a little bit gimped, so you won't get the second cast on her skill too. But it doesn't really matter that much. Um, Lily doing the double cast is a little bit more damage, but Kaliostra getting her skill one off consistently, way more important. It's not, it's not even a joke how much more important that is. So hopefully people um, think if you're thinking about boosting up your water, it is possible that right after light GW, we do have water favored GW um, that it's that can possibly happen. I think it's either wind or water. Um, I may think they may skip the order and give water earlier based on the fact that we have Uno six star coming out. So just keep this in the back of your mind when thinking about uh, building your teams. Other than that, she's also used for the Hercules build with Kaliostra as a way to feed um, Deluge Crest to Kaliostra so she can keep recasting her skill three. This isn't too common, but it's something that people should know in case you do want to get our water Hercules. You can already tell that I'm talking, <laughs> that's two units here in this video that have already mentioned this weapon. So. Maybe you want to get one for fun. Maybe you don't. It's up to you. Um, I would say that she's replaceable, but she's not a bad unit at all for it because of the fact that she can give one directly to her and she also give charge bar two, which is not bad. Uh, that can also be given to your main character as well, I believe. I, believe. Um, I don't think your main character is going to benefit from it much, um, but it's something that can happen, I guess. Other than that, that's Juliet. Um, let's go on to the last unit. The next unit we're looking at is Diantha. Um, I believe DJ Salt just surprised to get its unit. So I'll link his video down in the description. If I don't do it, somebody else can link it. Um, if you want somebody's opinion who has experience with the unit and not somebody who's just talking on his ass, um, watch that video instead because I really don't know shit about this unit. I'll be honest. Um, I know they heal. They're okay for full auto. They give hype. They have a sub passive that does not stack with Kim. So here you can see that it says boost to Earth main character damage cap. This does not stack with Kim, therefore it's pretty much irrelevant. The only time this can really benefit you is you're running the Katana grid. Not many people have that grid. I have it, but not many people have it. So I don't think that's really something you have to worry about. But uh, she seems to be like a alternative to Jessica. If you don't have Jessica, um, if you're looking for a full auto, especially somebody who can cleanse on full auto, she's probably really good for that. Keep in mind, she does not do Ogi damage. So you may want to spec away from that Ogi build and go a little bit more auto damage heavy with her. So things like the um, uh, Alex weapon. I've seen people using that weapon now a lot. Uh, Grand Leona's, right? Le not Leona, Grand Golden Knight, I think, has the see a damage weapon um it is a crit weapon too though but crit weapon with no attack mod so that's all it would be for her it's a crit weapon you may want to step a little bit away from that for full auto i'm not too sure but that's my thoughts on her pretty much an alternative jessica i think she, i think salt mentioned she does less damage than jessica due to the nature that jessica has a gun and she shoots out her nuke every like couple turns so 
I'm gonna keep it simple, watch the video. I can't give you information on a unit I do not have. So the best I can tell you is watch the video. Next. And now we're at the last unit being Gawain. One thing I will mention about it is that people who are going to get this character for the EX plus OTK, I'm going to tell you straight up, right? Ping matters for this, OT, this setup big time. If your ping is around mine, which is 160 to 180, 200 on bad days. Um, this is with Mudfish, by the way. Uh, three button EX plus, right? Any three button no Ogi EX plus is equivalent or worse than any one button Ogi build. So if you have the one button Ogi, Ogi setup I posted, don't waste your time doing uh, any three button OTK. I had to learn this the hard way because I ended up doing um, three buttons for Earth GW, which was my hero skill two. Narmea wanted to. I didn't have enough cap up on my Narmea because she's not ringed. So it made the one and two a little bit inconsistent. So I had to learn that the hard way that it was just better off for me, for me just to Ogi speed wise because of my ping and reloading. Um, factoring all of that in, it didn't really change much for me to do three buttons. And I could have just did one button. Not to mention it's a lot less stressful hitting one button off auto than hitting like three. That's why this GW, I plan on Ogieing. <laughs> so I uh, just want to throw that out there. If anyone had around, most people probably have around my ping watching this video. Unless you're in C, C region, uh, your ping is a lot lower than mine's. Or West Coast. Uh, West Coast is like 110 ish. Uh, but if you're East Coast EU, give it up. <laughs> I know. I feel you there, brother. Sucks. Um. Other than the OTK, he's still the highest burst damage for one turn for light. Uh, keep in mind, it's one turn. The only problem is that currently light meta consists of two units, which is John and Hal Senna. Hal Senna is a two turn burst. John is one turn. So you probably see the most common combo being John uh, House Senna, Hal and Mal, or John, House Senna, and Lucio. These are very common burst setups. You can get Gawain if you need any, if you need someone to replace either of these, um, either of those two units being Hal and Mal and Lucio. So keep that in mind. Um, the, another thing is that if you're running Aphrodite, you lose out the ability to run it now because you need every unit to be a different race, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, something that people kind of forget is that Aphrodite is based on the types. So um, you would need each one to be a different race to gain the max attack boost from this. It says types here, it, it, it should be race, so. The problem with this is that John and House Senna are um, human and draft. Main character is freebie. So because you have another human with Gawain, you couldn't hit it with Aphrodite. Well, you, you can use Aphrodite, but you only get, I believe, 70% light attack. So something to keep in mind for people who plan on doing that for GW. You got to keep in mind that the way Aphrodite works is that Aphrodite is based on triggers or any Ogies. You need three Ogies to recast. So it's very popular during GW because it's, the boss tends to trigger quite a bit. And it's way better than running Karen, <laughs> honestly. Because Karen drops your elemental attack to what, 50? So if somebody is getting Gawain, just keep that in mind that you do lose quite a bit of attack if you were to run. Aphrodite. So it's, you should at least have one of the two, Hal and Mal or Lucio, to put in replace to replace them. Other than that, um, he's not really used for much more than that. I, I I don't have him, but from what I've seen, he's not used for much more than that. 
mainly just the OTK and I guess the really high burst capability he can do in one turn. So he's not a bad unit, but I haven't seen too much with him. He's one of the units you want to keep in your back pocket just in case. You never know. So we do have light guild wars coming up, so it's something to, to keep in mind. Other than that, those are all the new units. Let's get on to the oldies and the it's gonna be a quick one though. Now, because we're gonna make it quick, I'm just gonna go over the all the LEs in quick succession. I'm um, starting off with light. Light is the upcoming Guild Wars. I do prioritize Guild Wars and Dread Dread Barrage because those are crew-based events with really important items you can get, which is Valor, and they take priority over everything else in the game, in my opinion. High performance in those gives you the best re return in your investment in this game. So. Units that may be useful to people, John, OE unit. If you're having a hard time doing an OTK with light, John can be useful. Um, so you just have the stamina passive. See, also used for the Kango build I used to do back in the day. I posted a video about that long, long time ago. So you can, you can use her for that kind of. Um, is it worth doing? Not really if you have silver to weapon, but hey, it works. Fairy, it's still a good unit because of strike time. Now, keep in mind, if you're if you're in a crew where you don't get to access your strike time, don't worry about her. But if you're in a crew that you know your strike time is something you do have ability to use, she's still a good unit for that. However, I recommend you having a very, very strong light build. I, to be honest, I would not surprise to get her. But if you're like a new player, who is like has somehow pulled out a eating grid off your butt? I don't know how you did it, but you just used every bar you had. You got a re, you got like a uh, insane starter account or something. Then, and you're just somehow missing fairy, but you had like every other unit. Like you had, uh, you had your John, you had your Hal Senna, you have everyone else, and you just like I need to maximize my speed during light. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I would spark, I mean, I would uh, surprise to get fairy, but I'm sure that's not many people. Cyril's okay for full auto. If you don't have DLF, he does provide a veil, but if you have DLF, don't get him. Once we get to uh, Silva, now I did post a video which includes a one button full auto with her weapon. It's actually amazing to use her, um, it does require full limit break though. So if you need one copy for a full limit break, surprise taking it, it's not a bad option. Not to mention Silver herself, it's not bad for OTK. Don't bar the weapon though. Do not bar this weapon. Don't bar it. It's not worth, it's not worth it. Charlotta is good for people who are brand new players. Probably a lot of you coming from the Yaiba event want to play the game. Charlotta is a strong unit for her high damage multiplier and can carry your whole team if you're newest player. Keep in mind though, it depends if the boss is either multi-hit or AOE. There's two different ways the boss can attack you. AOE is attacking every unit at the same time, regardless of the situation they're in. Um, and multi-hit is attacking each unit individually. Um. So things like mirror image work on multi-hit and they do not work on AOE. We talked about Gawain. DLF is a strong unit. She's gonna be a great asset to anybody who full autos in this GW. Um, she has insane debuffs and she has auto cleanse on her skill one. And she has mirror image, armored. She's actually a good unit. And for like the five of you who don't have her, and if you're casual and you like the full auto, I recommend her over everybody else, by the way. Like she's more important than everyone else I mentioned just because of how good she is for full auto. Sar is really good for EX plus. If you don't have units like Robomi, Melissa Bella, Sar is really, really good. And that's about it for light. Keep in mind, there's actually no rebalance units for light. 
I didn't even talk about the, re the rebalance, but there are units that are getting rebalanced. I'll go over them. I have no info on them because the game is l forgot to release the core draw or something. I don't know. We have no info on any of the rebalance units, so I'll go over it if we get there. Use is still a great surprise ticket target. Gangsta Knife is still a great weapon. Zeta is still really good. Um, Z4 Snap. Oh, Z4 game. Um, Zeta is really good. Athena is really good. Yule is getting a rebalance, I believe. And Theria is a god unit for full auto. Siegfried is really good for fire OTK, but mainly just for fire OTK. He, he has usability in like, um, fa high level solo, but I don't know if I recommend it to most people. It's not, it's no real purpose for it. If I would recommend that if you're going to do fast high level solo, do it on your main LD first. LD where you have a fleshed out character pool, so you have multiple options to build a team. Unless you want to go for all elements, the titles. I don't think it's worth it though. I did it. You got nothing. <laughs> I did it months ago. Almost half. I did it almost a year ago now. Now think about it. Like in what? Three months would be a year. Or four months would be a year. Got nothing for it. So. Sturm is a really good burst unit for Ogi Water. Um. Could be useful for GW. Mm. Lily's still a great unit. Nothing really changed with Lily. Romeo's a good unit, uh, thanks to his five star. He's also used in a three turn grant order high level setup. So if you're looking to farm for your first gold bar and hey, you have like near Octos, near Octos, Siete, Romeo, could be something you want to do. Mm. Less is still good for a passive skill. We talked about Juliet. Mm. Vampy is okay. Um, I wouldn't surprise to get her though. Uh, depending on what, what units you have, those could be useful. I don't think anybody in water is getting rebalanced. I think it's Uno. It's Uno. Oh, and Summer Europa. How would I forget? My wife. Um, Siegfried is getting a rebalance. No info on him, though. Hmm. If only this Nemo was as good as the Christmas one. <laughs> if only. Hmm. Pangy is a very solid unit. Um, but I would recommend getting Pangy if you have the other important units being Christmas and Armea and mainly Mahira. If you have the other important units, it's really good. If you don't have other units, then you're just really using Pangy. So it's like, it's, it's an option. She can kill herself as a way to bring out Lovella though, to so keep that in mind. But it's not something I would be like, oh man, I gotta get Pangy. I you could use Sarasa. Takes a little bit longer now, but... Our Christmas Rackham. Did we talk about wind? No, we have not talked about wind. Um, so some people on my stream was talking about Birdman and Yoda. My opinion on them is that if you have the current, um, the current uh, event unit, was it Shinobu? If you have Shinobu, so you can kind of replace them. So, if you have Shinobu, just use Shinobu. I don't think it's worth surprise getting Birdman or Yoda, but it's something I, I would mention that people did tell me on stream. Because I didn't mention them on stream. Um, as I mentioned, this is my second time recording this. So, I don't think mo I don't think people should be surprised getting Urius anymore. By the way, just throwing this part out is that. There's enough Urias in the game. 
If you don't have them, somebody else in your group has them. We talked about Florence already. Teamot's okay. If you need a strong wind unit. And now we're on to the last and final LD Dark. Vashiraga is still a good pick. Um, for EX Plus, and he does 20 turns without dying. <laughs> You'll get to play the game at least. <laughs> uh, I don't remember anybody on when getting re- Oh, Summer John. So, Kalulu, um, I'm going to tell people like it is. Kalulu's not worth a surprise ticket anymore in 2020. Uh, she's still a good Bahamut high level unit, but I'm pretty sure most of you guys probably don't do Bahamut high level anymore. Other, I'm pretty sure most of you guys are now just doing Fado. So I wouldn't recommend a new person get Kalulu. It really depends on how dedicated of a player you are. If you're like a mega tryhard and you're willing to go the distance, she's a good surprise ticket. But if you're like 99% of the, or 90% of the player base, you don't really care that much. She's not worth a surprise ticket. Her weapon is good for Hades, but Magna Dark is so good in its current state that I don't think you should go Hades currently because Magna Dark with AX, AX skills is actually good. Like, it's not, I'm not joking. It's like really good. I'll post videos on it in the future, but um, Magna Dark with AX skills is actually really good. Now, you could be like me though, and somehow not get any Magna Dark weapons, cause you know, I can, I can never, I can never pull Celeste Claw. I, I don't believe it exists, cause I, I never seen one. So, if, if anyone got a Claw, they want to give it to me, I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking, cause I don't get the Claw, so. I'm getting a bunch of axes though. I'm thinking about making. An, I'm thinking about making more an axe build. I already have one axe. I just need a couple more. Probably make like one or two more. So I'm thinking. Every axe, yeah. I have one down, so I'm going to use one of my AX skills on it, and we'll see. This is for Bahamut high level for auto, by the way. If you're wondering why I'm, I'm building an axe grid, it's going to be like three axe, three axe with stamina two Fidel Spines for Celeste Full Auto, Bahamut High Level. It'll be out in the future. Don't tell people they're going to take my idea. Um, so that's my opinion on Kululu. I think Kululu is still a great unit, but surprise to getting Kululu, it really depends on the type of player you are. If you're highly motivated, then Kalulu is a good surprise ticket. But if you're not that type of player, if you know yourself, then don't get Kalulu. It's not worth it. The same thing applies to Lunalu now. Uh, Lunalu, she's still a good unit. I still use her. But the stuff I do, I don't think most people do it anymore, to be honest. So, Lunalu is, is also in that situation where, like, if you're a highly dedicated dark player, of course you want the unit. Don't, don't even think about it. But if you're a guy who's like, bro, I'm gonna hit full auto, I hit full auto on every raid, then don't do it. It's, it's not worth. <laughs> She's not good for full auto. <laughs> so, because full auto is so prevalent in the game now, um, why do you think they add in this whole like <laughs> if you die you can still do damage stuff? Cause people don't care. <laughs> they, they don't, straight up. I hit full auto, I turn away. And it's what it is. Now a unit that's actually good on full auto and manual is Predator. So if you guys have not been watching what happened Dark GW, a lot of people, myself included, were using Predator on full auto because her burst capability is actually insane. Even on full auto, she can do a ton of damage. And her skills line up in such a way that it does not conflict with the main objective, which is damage. So Predator is actually a good manual unit and a good full auto unit. 
So see, definitely a unit you want to use at all times. Another good pick, thanks to the upcoming rebalance, would be Narmea, who would also work relatively well on full auto. Um, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I think she has a, a nuke, right? Her skill too. So, um, we have a problem here with it because now her, no, 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 she'll work on full auto. Cause I believe this nuke applies the debuff, right? So she would activate butterfly effect. Kyoka Suigetsu, then transcend applies the debuff for you. Well, it's actually butterfly effect. Kyoka Suigetsu, no, wait, no, butterfly effect, glass wing waltz. Kyoka Suigetsu, Transcend. And Transcend would apply the debuff. So right after she would auto with the Assassin on. So yeah, I think Narmea would be a good full auto unit. Just because of that. So keep that in mind. Um, if you're looking for another great dark full auto unit, Narmea definitely could be one. And that covers about it for dark. Weapons. None of them. Um, I am of the belief that these weapons will be getting a five star next anniversary. But that's what I believe. I feel like these weapons are so eh. So I think it's about damn time they get a full limit break. I mean, ultra limit break. So I don't think any of them are worth it though. Maybe Gisela, but even Gisela, it's not worth it because you can just play Magna Dark. Summons, now summons, this is something I think is worth it. Um, this you still got the really good summons like uh, Seder. Seder's a really good one. Um, Bonito, I guess, is still a good one. Thor, Typhon. Gorilla, Freyr. Now, each of the crest summons, depending on what LE you play, have some viability. Um, I would say that the top ones being water and earth. Water, earth is probably the best too. Wind is really good if you're doing the Hercules build. Um, if you didn't know, they use the crest summon as their main summon, I believe. I think the main or the sub, so. That's also not a bad option. No, it's sub. Yeah, I think it's sub. Um, some use Karen, some use the Crest Summon. It depends on what you're doing. I think I think two turns. If you're doing the, uh, I think for Fa, they use the, they use the Summon, and for everything else, they run Karen, if I remember correctly. Because you can't use Karen turn one. You can't hit Fa turn one. Because of the damage reduction. I have to go back and look at it. Then you have the bonus damage summons. Each of them are really good. Red hair. Water jellyfish thingy. Owl cat. Um, probably Artemis is probably the best one. For the upcoming GW. Especially if you don't have Thor for limit break. Uh, I would actually recommend getting Artemis over Thor if your Thor requires Sunstones. So if you're in a person like I have a one star Thor, I think you're probably best off just getting Artemis than using a Sunstone on Thor. That's my opinion. But uh, I think it's better off just getting Artemis. Now this is for tryhards only. If you're gonna full auto, neither of them matter. <laughs> so keep that in mind, right? If you're gonna full auto, neither of them matter. So I think that covers about everything when it comes to my thoughts on a surprise ticket. Keep in mind, if you want to be a part of the giveaway, leave a comment with your, uh, am I gonna do the scam gotcha or am I gonna do the surprise ticket? Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in a the comment. And I'll see you guys on my Twitch stream if you're going to watch me pull for Lily.
Till then. Later.